Hello, it's The Ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there and what others are claiming to be true. And as truth finders, we're trying to find answers. Sometimes we need to check in on some things that have been around for a while. What is the mystery of the Freemasons? What does it mean and what are they doing? Take a listen to this. Maybe some of this will be new to you. Maybe it will be a review, but it's never bad to check in on these things that have been around as long as something like the Freemasons. From Voices.Shortpedia.com, let's see if we can get some answers on those mysterious Freemasons. Let's see what they have to say. This topic has been around a long time, and there's a lot of information going on about it, but I want to revisit it because this started a very long time ago. What has happened, and are they still with us today? Let's find out. Secret societies have grown throughout history, and their membership has included the Founding Fathers and the Royals, the Knights Templar, Freemasons, Bavarian Illuminati, Skull and Bones, the Bilderberg. They've all recruited members, primarily men. The appeal of secret societies stems from a combination of all that mystery and mythology. What even is the Order of the Freemasons? Well, the Masons play an important role in American history, okay? After all, 13 of the 39 individuals who signed the U.S. Constitution were Masons. Founding fathers such as George Washington, James Monroe, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, and even Paul Revere. They were all fraternal organization members. But who exactly are the Freemasons? However, Freemasonry is a global organization with a lengthy and complicated history, We know this. Politicians, engineers, scientists, etc., even philosophers, they've all been members. Many of these members have played pivotal roles in major worldly events like revolutions and even wars. Freemasonry is the world's oldest fraternal society. Did you know that? Well, there's a little bit of trivia for you. Famous for its white aprons and esoteric symbols, despite its lengthy history, Freemasonry has always been cloaked in mystery. Mystery attracts us. The organization's ceremonies and customs may appear cultish, clannish, secretive, maybe even evil to outside observers. And some of this is due to Freemasons' often intentional objection to ever discussing the organization's customs with any outsiders. However, it's also a product of numerous famous movies and novels, like Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Who hasn't heard of that? which have encouraged the misunderstandings or portrayed the organization in an unfavorable light. Again, we're victims of what is given to us. That's why we're exploring here on this channel. What do we really think of all this stuff? All right, so like this share says, let's dig deep into the history and beliefs of the Freemasons. And hey, maybe you'll want to become one. Freemasonry, the doctrines and practices of the biggest global secret society, the secret fraternal men-only organization of the free and accepted Masons. Freemasonry, which was spread by the British Empire, is still most popular in the British Isles and other nations that were formerly part of that empire. Did you know that estimates of global Freemasonry society in the early 21st century ranged from nearly 2 million to more than 6 million people? It was developed from the Middle Ages. Uh, Stonemasons and cathedral builders, they are the ones that got this whole thing going. And as cathedral construction failed, several lodges of operative working masons started to admit honorary members to supplement their numbers. A handful of these lodges sprang contemporary symbolic or speculative Freemasonry, which borrowed the ceremonies and trappings of older organizations. The first Grand Lodge, an organization of lodges, was established in England back in 1717. So this whole thing goes way back there. And so what is it? Well, according to the BBC, Freemasonry is not only the world's oldest fraternal organization, but it's also the world's biggest, with an estimated global membership of 6 million individuals. And as the name indicates, it is a fraternal organization comprised nearly entirely of males who get together for mutual benefit, most often for professional or financial purposes. However, did you know this? Women can now join the Freemasons. That's pretty big time.
However, Freemasons, or Masons as they're frequently referred to, are also committed to loftier aims. It's reportedly supported the Brotherhood of Man, and in the past has frequently been linked with 18th century Enlightenment ideas, such as anti-monarchism, republicanism, constitutional governance. This is not to claim that Freemasonry is completely secular and free of religious overtones. Its members are urged to believe in an ultimate entity described as the grand architect of the universe. That's Masonic terminology to you and me. Instead of a personal god as envisioned by Christianity, there's a creator, deism, which is originated in the 17th century. Enlightenment, which supports the idea that the supreme being is like the ultimate watchmaker, a god who created the cosmos, but did not actively participate in the lives of its creatures. The members also have behavioral guidelines. They're governed by an ethical code. This code is drawn from several texts, the most well-known of which is a set of documents identified as the Old Charges, or Constitutions. According to one review of Freemasonry, one of these papers, known as the Regis Poem, or the Hallowell Manuscript, is dated the late 14th or early 15th century and is reportedly the oldest text to reference Masonry at all. The Hallowell Manuscript is written in rhyme and purports to trace the history of Masonry while also prescribing proper moral behavior by the Masons, trying to ensure that what they agreed on then continues as the future of the earth and humans move forward. But let's break this down. Although members are urged to believe in a supreme being or grand architect of the universe, Freemasonry is not a religion, so they say. Masonic temples and secret rites have pitted them against the Catholic Church even. The Church condemned Freemasons for the first time back in 1738 and has since issued about 20 decrees against them. In response to a surge in the number of Catholics joining the order, Roman Catholic bishops reaffirmed almost 200 years of these criticisms just back in 1985. I bet you didn't know. Well, a lot of people did not know there was that separation because it seems that the Catholics are tied to Freemasons somehow. But if you really think about it, why is it that we think that? Who has an answer to that? It just kind of comes with time for a lot of people. Not saying everyone doesn't know, but for a lot of us, we wake up one day, things have been told to us, and we think we know something, right? Well, here's a bit of history that might be helpful. And the big question, are there Freemasons today? Well, of course they are. One thing that you might not know is that the Shriners, I'm sure you've heard of them, are actually a subgroup of the Freemasons. They're also known as the Ancient Arabic Order Nobles of the Mystic Shrine. That's something to pick up. And the connection has profoundly affected their public image. And the Shriners were formed in 1870 by Freemasons at New York City's Knickerbocker College, and they're still active, and they're still volunteering today. And if you're on TV at all or been around, you've seen them or heard of them. So we have Freemasons. We still have them today. We have Shriners. But what's that symbol we always see? What's that about? Well, the most known symbol for the Freemasons is that square and compass. I'm sure that you, well, compasses. I'm sure that you've seen that one. The right angle of the builder's square is connected by a compass, a fundamental instrument in geometry, which according to some MIT experts, is symbolized by the G at the center of the sign. Others have interpreted that letter G to represent God, or the grand architect of the universe. I guess we can't really be full-on sure unless we were there at this whole thing's inception. That all-seeing eye? Well, it's a Masonic emblem, and it's had a lot of dispute. There have always been arguments about what this is. Egyptians employed the Eye of Horus long before the Freemasons. The all-seeing eye frequently occurs in Renaissance art as a symbol of Christianity even and God's watchfulness. However, groups, they like to reserve their rights to believe that it was chosen on purpose by the Freemasons, by Henry Wallace in particular, and Franklin D. Roosevelt when they redesigned the dollar note in 1934. And unless we can go back and ask them, who can really be sure? 
The all-seeing eye, according to the George Washington Masonic National Memorial, is a Masonic emblem representing the watchful care of the Supreme Architect that first appeared in written Masonic literature in the mid-1700s. I think that's a more, I don't really want to say it, careful way of saying what they said before, but to me that maybe means something. Maybe it has something to do with that. Some things you may not know about Freemasonry are Masons, they don't discuss religion or politics when they gather and are still condemned by the Catholic Church. It is not a religious organization, although atheists are not permitted. The vast majority of the Founding Fathers were not Freemasons, even though somehow, it seems over time, everyone thinks they all were. There are no hidden Masonic symbols on the U.S. dollar note. This is what they say. And that's just a little bit about the Freemasons and what's gone on with them and the fact that they're still here. I'll leave you with this. Did you know that Paul Revere, Voltaire, Mark Twain, Winston Churchill, Nat King Cole, and even John Wayne, Freemasons. So take that with you. Let me know your thoughts on the subject. Are you a Freemason or do you know someone who is? We'd love to hear about it. And thank you for listening. And I will talk to you all soon.